Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Nastasia. I'm playing with this natural light again, just because it's sunny and, well, I just, honestly, I don't want to put my ring light up. That, that's what it is. I'm just lazy. Today we're talking about the law of attraction. Um, I kind of hinted at this on my Instagram about two weeks ago. Today, this video is mostly for my Christian friends. Um, if you're not a Christian, I still think you should stick around just because you might find this video very interesting. Um, this is mostly for people who don't know about Law of Attraction or who have been practicing it and are a Christian. Um, I need to make this video um, about why Law of Attraction and practicing it and serving Jesus Christ cannot coexist. So before I get into it, if you end up liking this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you never miss out on a video. Every time I post, my Instagram is right here. And that's the behind the scenes of my life. Um, yeah. So let's get into it. I have my laptop here, so if I'm reading, it's, it's from that because there's so much that I needed to write down. This is going to be a long video. It might be two parts. I don't know. Get your snack. Get your coffee. You can pause it right now and go get your things because this one's a doozy. If you haven't heard of law of attraction, manifesting, meditating, vision boards, whatever it is, I know there are a lot of you out there, but most people have heard of this, either, either on social media, on Pinterest, I've seen a lot of quotes relating to that, YouTube, there are so many videos nowadays, even from people that I follow, that they follow this. Um, there's a lot of different podcasts that I've listened to from Christian people who, um, who claim to be Christian, I believe they are, from what I can tell, but they also talk about how Law of Attraction has, say, has changed their life and all this, and um, there's, there's a lot of talk of this. I'm going to read some kind of like definitions so that I don't get this wrong. In the New Age thought philosophy, the Law of Attraction is the belief that positive or negative thoughts bring forth positive or negative experiences into a person's life. It's said to be the attractive, magnetic power of the universe that manifests through everyone and everything. According to New Age thought, this law attracts thoughts, ideas, people, situations, circumstances, and just everything you think about. Um, according to Jack Canfield, a well-known influencer in the law of attraction world, um, the law of attraction allows for infinite possibilities. This is a quote by him, quote, the law of attraction allows for infinite possibilities, infinite abundances, and infinite joy. It knows no order of difficulty, and it can change your life in every way, unquote. So basically, if you focus on something you really want, it'll come to you. And if you focus on something you really don't want, it will still come to you. The idea that you manifest everything that happens in your life. The idea is that your thoughts lead to your emotions, your emotions bring forth everything in your life, from the house you just bought, to the job you just lost, even the death of a loved one, the power is completely in your hands. So that cancer you have, according to the Law of Attraction, you brought it upon yourself. The death of your child, according to the Law of Attraction, you or that child or something brought it upon themselves by their thoughts and their emotions. What I'm going to do today is talk to you about why the Law of Attraction and New Age thought in general is one of the most dangerous, toxic, and honestly, satanic things you can do especially if you are a Christian praising Jesus Christ. I want to note that there are a few words that I'm going to be using in this video that I'm going to kind of replace with other words because the YouTube bots like to take down videos that use these words even if I'm just saying them. So I'm going to be talking about the enemy. You should know who the enemy is. If you don't, it is right there. Um, that's what I'm going to say in the enemy. And when I say voices, I'm meaning this. So those are some words that YouTube bots don't like and I don't want this video taken down because it is so important. So I'm using the word voices and the word enemy. I'm going to say an enemy follower for this. I have experience with dabbling in the law of attraction. So this is not me sitting on my high horse cursing everybody else. I've been there. I've seen how dangerous it is and how easy it is to fall into. I've done that and 
while being a Christian. I mean, this was just last year. This wasn't years and years ago. And so I want to talk about that and make it very clear to you that I am not above you in any way. So if you look up law of attraction kind of speakers or people, um, the main kind of people you will hear from is somebody named Abraham Hicks. This was so confusing to me at first because I thought this was just a woman named Abraham. It turns out it's not. So there's a woman, a, a husband and a wife. Um, their names are Esther Hicks and Jerry Hicks, I think. Let me check. Yeah, Jerry Hicks. And according to them, I'm going to read this word by word so I don't mess it up. According to them, Abraham consists of a group of entities that are interpreted by Esther Hicks. She claims that these entities are a, quote, group of consciousness from the non-physical dimension, unquote. To me, entities sounds a lot like voices, if you know what I'm saying, um, from a non-physical dimension, the spiritual dimension, speaking through her. She also teaches that life is meant to be fun and easy. So I went on her slash Abraham slash whatever it is website. You can do this. I will list the website below for you to look up all of their teachings. So they are kind of not the founders because I'm going to talk about the founder later, but very influential in law of attraction, that whole new age world. Um, so some of her teachings are one, you are here in this body because you chose to be here. Two, the basis of your life is freedom. The purpose of your life is joy. Three, you are a creator. You create every thought. Four, relax into your natural well-being. All is well. Five, you may appropriately depart from your body without illness or pain. And six, you cannot die. You are everlasting life. I want to pick apart some of these really quick. So one is you are here in this body because you chose to be here. Let's compare that to scripture. Scripture says in Psalms 139, 13 through 14, for you formed my inward parts. You, meaning God, knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So that says God, you were in this body because God put you there. Another one in Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is God speaking. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Let's look at her second um, kind of belief in this. The basis of your life is freedom. The purpose of your life is joy. Well, in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. That's the basis of your life. That's the purpose of your life. It is not freedom and it is not joy. Now don't get me wrong, you can and you do find freedom and joy in Jesus Christ and knowing him in your life, but that's not, that's the, even if we spent our whole life miserable but praising Jesus, it would be worth it. Read the book of Job if you want to know more about that. Number three, you are the creator. You, you are a creator. Um, you create every thought. So the idea of you being a creator in her mind is that you create everything that happens around you. Not just like you create paintings and you're a creator, a content creator. She means like you create your universe. The Bible says in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created. Second one, Hebrews 11.3. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. Isaiah 45.7. I form light and I create darkness. This is God speaking. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Colossians 1.16. For by him all things were created in heaven and earth. All things were created by God, <laughs> um, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Okay, um, number four of what she believes, relax into the natural well-being. All is well, that's what she's, all is well. <laughs> all right, this is what scripture says, Romans seven eighteen. for I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is in my flesh. 
for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. That's talking, I think that's Paul speaking, um, about what your natural well-being it is, is. Relax into your natural well-being. Well, our natural well-being is that nothing good dwells in me. All is well. Okay. <laughs> um, next verse for that. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, Galatians 5.17. So if you're, if you're relaxing into your natural well-being, you are relaxing into the desires of your flesh, which are against the spirit of Jesus Christ. Okay, next belief. She says, you may appropriately depart from your body without illness or pain. Literally all I put is this is just freaking weird. I don't really know what this means. Does this mean you die without illness or pain? Does this mean astro, astro projection that you can have your soul fly around wherever you want without illness or pain? Because that is something that is in this whole new age process. It was actually founded in Hinduism and Buddhism. I will go into that. But part of that is that your soul can transfer to different levels and become a higher version of yourself. And part of that is astral projecting. They, they use that and they, they use this sneaky word called meditation to get you into it and then get deeper and deeper and then your soul can leave your body. Well, guess what happens when you give, you have a void in you? Um, that gives a lot of room for voices or the enemy to enter into your body. You are not, not to play with astral projection or anything like that. All right, and the sixth belief that she puts on her thing is you cannot die, you are everlasting life. So I don't totally know what she means by this. If she, th if she means you can't die in an earthly way, then she's obviously wrong, and I don't think I need scripture to prove that. If she means you can never die on this earth, yes, obviously you can. But if she's talking about our souls, then in a way, yeah, we are everlasting. But if you're not a child of God, then you'll die every day in eternity for hell. So yeah, you're everlasting, but you're gonna everlastingly be dying. Um, so that's the only thing that I don't think I completely disagree with her, because I do obviously believe in an afterlife. Um, so Good job, Abraham slash Esther slash Jerry. I, I agree with that. Um, this is very interesting. When Abraham it Hicks was asked, is there a God? Is there something that can help us or is it just us? She said this and I will, I will link this video down below so you can watch it. She said, quote, you are accurate when you feel that you are that which is God, both from your physical and non-physical perspective. The combination of you and you and all of the rest of us is what God is because God is consciousness that is expanding. To be in sync with that energy and feel infinite intelligence pouring into you, or sorry, pouring through you, in time you have established godliness or something. I think I, I forgot to finish that sentence, but I, I actually don't really need to <laughs> um, because all I needed in that is to say, her saying that the combination of you and you and all the rest of us is what God is because God is consciousness that is expanding. So clearly she does not believe in Jesus Christ. Clearly the one of the main leaders of this whole movement is saying you are God. You are your own God. We are all our own gods. So just keep that in mind. And I, I went over with you guys how she and her husband Jerry claim that Abraham is this group of entities speaking through Esther. So it's technically not even Esther speaking all of these things. It's the group of entities living inside of her. Um, and I want to point out, if, if that's true, then what they said is, you are your own God, that God is also just consciousness expanding, and to be in sync with that energy and feel in infinite intelligence pouring through you. This reminds me a whole lot of Genesis and um, in the Garden of Good, or the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Good and Evil. And when the serpent, or the enemy, was tempting Eve, he said something along the lines of, you will surely not die like God said you will die. God knows that when you eat of this tree, you will know everything that God knows and be like him. So he is tempting Eve with knowledge, tempting her with 
knowing everything. And it's just interesting to me that it talks about infinite intelligence pouring through you. Um, something else that she slash Jerry slash whatever entities these are teaches is that life is meant to be fun and easy. Let's see what Jesus says. In Matthew 16, 24 through 25, Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will use it, or will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So there's somebody else I want to talk about, and I mentioned him earlier in the video. This is another man who is very looked up to in the new the new age law of attraction universe. So here's some things that Jack Canfield, I will put a, uh, his page down below so you can look at all this yourself. Um, I mentioned him earlier um, about when he said the law of attraction allows for infinite possibilities, infinite abundance, and infinite joy. It knows no order of difficulty and it can change your life in every way. So the Bible to that says for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So it's literally saying, when it says eating and drinking, not a matter of eating and drinking, it's talking about all the things. So that was like back in Bible times, you know, having rich food and all of that, that was like their abundance. It wasn't getting necessarily that, fa I mean, they didn't have cars. It wasn't getting that fancy car, that new laptop or anything. It wasn't that. It was, you know, having the best of the best in food and drink. Saying the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's not a matter of these pleasures on top of life, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. He said that um, the law of attraction allows for infinite joy. Scripture is clear that the only way to achieve joy is through Jesus Christ. It also says, count it all joy, <laughs> my brothers, when you make trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. Um, so it says, the law of attraction knows no order of difficulty. So with that mindset, if you are practicing the law of attraction perfectly, then you should have no order of difficulty either. Um, that's not what Bible, the Bible says. <laughs> Um, something else Jack Canfield said, quote, the universe through law of attraction will respond enthusiastically to both of these vibrations, positive or negative energy. It doesn't decide which one is better for you. It just responds to whatever energy you are creating and it gives you more of the same. Oh gosh. So there's a few things to unpack here. <laughs> Jack is saying that the universe is in control. Um, he does not say God. Um, and you might even argue, well, God made the universe. Yeah, but the universe did not create itself. I don't come for me, big bangers. You, you are, <laughs> that's not the conversation we're having right now. God created the universe. Um, God created everything in it. He is the creator and the caring, sovereign God. Um, so when it says the universe responds enthusiastically, it doesn't decide which one is better for you. Um, well, let's talk about who actually creates the world. It's God. And when it says it doesn't decide which one is better for you, well, the Bible says, even before word is on my tongue, be hoff, which that's the KJV version. Oh Lord, you knew it all together. Um, he knows before anything else. So when it says the universe doesn't care, the universe doesn't know. It just gives you what you want or what you put out there. Um, that's not true according to scripture. Um, in Psalms, it also says, great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. So for it to say that there is this unknown force of the universe that just has no moral compass, it just gives you what you put out there, is completely contrary to scripture of the God of the universe who truly created everything. Um, it also says, for when, whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. So even when our heart condemns us, even when we put out those negative energies, God is greater than our heart. He is the protector of us. He protects us from ourselves. So to say, well, I put it out there and that's why I got cancer. What good and loving God just lets us destroy ourselves because he's like, there's nothing I can do. My hands are tied. He is all knowing, all sovereign, all powerful, as scripture says. Jack Canfield also says, ask the universe for what you want, not for what you don't want. So it literally says, I, I know this because I was in this. 
Um, a whole huge thing is do not focus on what you don't want or else it'll happen to you. Don't focus on what you don't want. Don't think about it at all. Don't talk about it. Pretend you don't have that fear. The Bible in Psalms says, cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never, he will never allow the righteous to be shaken. It quite literally says, tell me your burdens. Put that out there. Put that negative energy out there because give it to me. I want to carry your burdens for you. I am the Lord. I care for you. Not put your burdens out there so I can make it happen to you. Like, no. <laughs> so again, that goes completely against scripture. Jack Canfield also says, believe that you'll get what you want, then take action. Maintain positive expectancy, going about your day with certainty, knowing that you've put your future in the hands of powers that are greater than yours. It's deciding with conviction that what you want will absolutely happen. In Proverbs 16, 9, it says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. James 4, 3 says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Let me tell you something that, a verse that is used out of context and twisted so hard for this belief in law of attraction is um, the idea of, what is it? It's like, I'll, I'll put it on the screen here, but it's not, I'm going to butcher it, but it's something like, um, you do not you do not receive because you do not ask or something or anything you ask of the Lord he gives to you or um, he gives you the desires of your heart but nobody follows it up <laughs> with the fact that it has to be in his will your desires have to match the desires of God if you desire for a innocent child to have suffering God's not just like well, that's a desire of your heart, so sure, yeah. No, because that's not, the, that's not the desire of God's heart. It's saying when you are so close to God and you are so in his word and talking to him daily and chasing after him, it's saying that his desires become your desires, not the other way around. And let me repeat that. His desires stay true and hold fast, they don't change and they become your desires. He's here, he does not move. You get up to here, not equal with God, but your desires start aligning with God's. It starts becoming full of joy and truth and purity because you love God. So this is some fun facts. Um, Jack Canfield is also the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Um, take that in because when I was a kid, um, I might be dating myself here, but that was a huge series. The Chicken Soup for the Soul series, and I always thought it was Christian, to tell you the truth. Um, there's so many books with that. And the co-author was this man who was so against scripture, it's insane. Attraction also recommends meditation or repeating mantras to increase your chances of achieving what you desire. So let's go over what a mantra is. Um, because you might be thinking, you know, some people say like, oh, my mantra for life is um, know better, do better. When you know better, you should do better. Um, that's a little different than what it's talking about here. Um, people just use that a little bit out of context because they think it's like my motto for life. But a mantra by definition is originally in Hinduism and Buddhism, a word or sound repeated to aid concentration in meditation. The recitation recitation basically reciting <laughs> of a mantra mantra is known as japa which literally means muttering or whispering in the beginning mantras were drawn only from the thousands of verses in the rig or rig veda hinduism's oldest and holiest scripture so if you are a christian out there please please hear me if you have been tricked into doing these mantras and whispering and all this, know where it came from. Know that it came from false gods. Know that every false god is actually just a ploy from the enemy. It is just voices um, deceiving you. I'm so sorry if you've fallen into this. Please wake up. Please. Because I've been there. And what is the purchase? <laughs> I can't speak. What is the purpose of a mantra? Mantra traditionally has two purposes, which can be called worldly and spiritual. 
In ancient times, mantra was also used for communication with and appeasing ghosts and ancestors, exorcism, or warding off evil spirits, remedies for illnesses, control of other people's thoughts or actions, and the acquisition of powers, also known as siddha, or magical skills. Mantra is said to quiet the habitual fluctuations of our consciousness and then steer consciousness towards its source in the self. I will link this below for you to read. That's a lot to unpack. Um, so the fact that Law of Attraction and Jack Canfield himself talks about, and Abraham Hicks, um, and all these people <laughs> talk about meditating and repeating mantras and all these things, it was literally used to contact ghosts or voices um, and to, you know, obtain magical powers. Please hear me. There are two forces of power. Only two. It is light and darkness. It is good and evil. It is God and it is the enemy. That's it. There's no in between. You can't obtain powers from a kind of okay source. No, it is literally either good or evil. So here's a med the meditation definition. Meditation, think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time in silence or with the aid of chanting for religious or spiritual purposes or as a method of reaction. Um, I just want to point something out. Um, chanting is quite often used in cults and occultic rituals and enemy rituals and enemy followers. Um, so I just, you know, take that as you will. But I also want to point out in the mantras definition where it talks about mantra is said to quiet the habitual fluctuations of our consciousness. That's literally trying to quiet your mind in such a way that you become very moldable, very vulnerable. You do not have the armor of God on you. You do not have the, the wisdom and everything because you're basically turning into clay for whatever to wreak havoc. You are quite literally giving up your consciousness and your, um, I, I guess, moral compass in that moment. My battery's about to die, so I'm going to try to get in as much as I can into the end of this. What I really want to focus on at the end is who was truly the founder of the Law of Attraction movement? I hope you're ready. <laughs> um, so, her name is Helena Blavatsky, Russian occultist, founder of this Theosophical Society, and worshiper of the enemy. Yes. Helena believed that the enemy was, quote, a commendable insurgent offering humans wisdom. Um, I have the link for that too. So what is the study of theosophy, what she founded? Quote, a number of philosophies maintaining that a knowledge of God may be achieved through spiritual ecstasy, direct intuition, or special relations. Uh, what is the knowledge of God may be achieved? Uh, what does that sound like? Genesis 3, 4 through 5, quote, But the serpent said to the woman, You will surely not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This woman, you should look her up. I might do a whole video just on her, but I can't fit it in to the end of this video. But what you need to know is the founder of the New Age movement, and is specifically Law of Attraction, was openly supporting the enemy. She talked about him in such a good way, and she believed that he was actually offering humans a favor with wisdom. Um, I don't know how you can truly be following Jesus, hearing me say these words, knowing these facts now and be okay with this. How can you be okay with the fact that this belief, this law of attraction, of attracting everything you want, was originally found by an, a Russian occultist, which I don't know if you know what occultist means, look it up, but it, it's not good, <laughs> who worships the enemy, who 
praised the enemy for the things he's done, she is also an awful person. Um, not only that, but it was also founded with all the different things it does, the mantras, the meditations, everything, in Hinduism and Buddhism, which are very clearly against scripture. Not only that, but all these things that people like Abraham Hicks and Jerry Canfield, or Jack Canfield, sorry, was saying are directly against scripture. And the thing is, I want to point something out. A lot of you will say, or be thinking, if you were like me, but I think it works. So how do you explain that? The thing is, law of attraction does work. I don't know if you're prepared for me to hear to say that or not, but law of attraction does work, and that's why it's terrifying. It it, it does happen. I have my own story with this, and I'm going to share it more in depth in a new video just to go over it in detail. But I was like, you know what? If this is actually a thing, well then, God has all the power, so if this actually works for me, then it must be God. And I manifested a bouquet of flowers that I was like, you know what, this is going to happen. In the next few days, I'm going to get flowers somehow, and guess what? I did. And I was like, wow, this works, blah, blah, blah. Well, you remember what I said earlier? There are only two forces of power. Good, evil. Light, darkness. God, the enemy. And guess what? The enemy has not, he has no power over God. That doesn't mean he doesn't have any power though. That doesn't mean he doesn't have any power over your flesh. Now, don't get me wrong when I say that. God protects us and as children of God, nothing can touch us apart from God's hand protecting us first. And I believe God allowed me to go through that experience so that I could be here today to tell you, you're not crazy. This thing does work and that's terrifying. It's like a Ouija board. Yeah. You could have an encounter talking to something, their voices, and that's who you're talking to, not your grandma Sue. But yeah, it works. And that's what's awful, is you are pulling upon the powers of darkness to give you things you want. To, literally the scripture says, what good is it to gain the world and forfeit your soul? Yeah, it does work, and you can manifest that house, you can manifest that. That's why so many Christians are falling into this, because they think, well, I tried it, and it works, so it must be God. It must not be bad. And then you will get fooled into thinking that, you know, God created the law of attraction and all this, but Scripture doesn't say that. Scripture doesn't say that. Scripture warns us against this. Please hear me. Please get in your word. If you don't believe me, that's okay. Do your own research. Get in the Bible, pray to God. <sighs> I am so passionate about this right now because I see the enemy pulling people into his clutches. He'll give you whatever you want on this earth because the Bible says he is the prince of this earth. He can give you those things. That's why the gate is narrow and the people who choose it are few and the way to salvation is skinny <laughs> because it's so easy to fall into that, that even his elect are deceived. AKA me, I was deceived guys. It does work. <laughs> That's why it's horrifying because it is not the powers of God. And I'm not saying God can't give you good things. God does give good gifts to his children, but not like this, not by focusing on a vision of a house you want and, and repeating chants and whispers about it and all of this. and. Please don't twist it be like I did and say, well, I'm not going to, it's it's not the universe, it's God. So I'll just replace the word universe with God. I'll just praise the word, pray, uh, replace the word meditations with prayer. You can't build your own religion and just fit Jesus into it. It is one way and it is Jesus and following something that not only was started by an enemy occultist, also by Hinduism, Buddhism, those are three things that are 100% against the one gospel of Jesus Christ. And who cares? Who cares if you manifest that dream life? Who cares if you manifest that car or that job or whatever it is? If you know it's not the way that the Bible says things are to be done, is it worth it? In my next video that I'm going to do, not only am I going to talk about my experience with this more in detail, um, but I'm also going to talk about how little truths are sprinkled in to make this so believable and how I fell for it. Um, please stay tuned. 
And if you really hated this video, that's okay. But please do your own research. Please, 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 because this grips my heart for you. So I love you guys so much. I can't wait to see you in the next video. I will see you soon. Comment down below what you think. I'm not afraid of what you have to say. I'm really not. I just hope that God does something with this, this video, because I am merely a vessel. This is, in anything that I said that is not of God, I pray that you forget, that your mind does not hold on to. I only want what God has to say through me to you guys. So, I love you. I will see you soon. And that's all I have. <laughs>